Through the next few of these video devotions, we're going to be thinking about our four discipleship priorities that we started thinking about last year. Uh, loving, growing, serving and going. Today we're going to think about uh, loving and what that means. First of all then, let's pray. Gracious God, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your goodness to us. Thank you for this day and we pray, Lord God, that in it we would be able to meditate upon your word in a way that brings honour to you. We pray, Holy Spirit, you'd help us to understand your word and all that it means for us. Thank you for your remarkable love for us. And as we reflect upon it now, we pray by your Holy Spirit, would you stir our hearts to love you more? In Jesus' name. Amen. Let me read from 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 to 12. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world, that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Now, when we talk about loving within the context of our four discipleship priorities, we mean the love of God and the love of others. As Christians, we ought to be those who love God and love others. And this passage that we've just read speaks about how Christians, people who have received the love of God, those who know God, will naturally love others. Or perhaps more accurately, supernaturally love others as the Spirit of God reveals to them the love of God. You see, uh, Christians aren't just supposed to be those people who, who hoard the love of God themselves, who contain it up for themselves and never share it. No, Christians are to be those who receive the love of God and let it pour out from them. But what do we mean by the love of God? Well, we see the love of God to us in many ways. We see the love of God to us in his daily provision for us. Every day, God provides for us exactly what we need. It might not always be exact, exactly what we want, but it is always what we need. And God has provided for us places to live, clothes to wear, food to eat, clean water, to drink. It's remarkable that God provides for so many people. God provides for the billions of people on this earth. You think about the logistics involved with that. It's unthinkably great how God makes the water cycle work the way that it does, and that rain would fall where it does, making seeds germinate and animals grow, all the different processes behind God providing for us. Much of our life on earth is dependent upon the light of the sun. And the sun is this uh, remarkable, uh, immensely uh, dense ball of gas undergoing what we call a nuclear fusion. It's an incredible thing. At an atomic level, the way that it works is, well, as you study the science of it, it's remarkable to behold. And as Christians, we can see the love of God. And every time two hydrogen atoms come together and form a helium one. It's remarkable, the love of God for us in his provision for us. But of course, and as this passage speaks about, the love of God for us is most supremely revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. Look at verse 10. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. It is a sacrifice uh, for a missionary to go to another country. There's a great lurch, a great missing of home. It's, it's difficult for them to leave friends and family behind, familiar food, familiar language. It's a big deal for someone to go on mission. And we ought to be very prayerful for those who do go out on mission, because it's not an easy thing at all. Think about, though, the love of God in sending Jesus. How much more so? It's not like someone being sent from a first world country to a third world country. And I know we don't use those classifications anymore, but 
You know what I mean. Someone going from a very prosperous society to a very poor one. Well, that would be difficult. And often missionaries have to go through a process of acclimatization. But Jesus came from the glories of heaven to the misery of earth, into a difficult, suffering world. But Jesus didn't just come. He came to rescue. God loves us so much that he sent his son to be cut off from his own loving presence, because God knew that would be the only way that we can be right with him. Jesus is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Without an atoning sacrifice, we cannot be at one, atoned with God. It's remarkable. The love of God for us shown in Jesus. As Christians, then, we ought to be reflecting on the love of God for us. As we look at the world around us and all the benefits and things that we enjoy, we ought to be full of praise for God. We ought to recognise the love of God in those things. I like the hymn, uh, Loved with Everlasting Love, and that would be a good one perhaps for you to look up and reflect upon the love of God for you, in not only in his provision, but especially in his provision and this beautiful world that is around us. But we also most supremely need to reflect upon the love of God for us in Christ. Daily we need to be on our knees in prayer, thanking God for what he's done for us in Jesus, lest we become unthankful, lest we forget what a remarkable and great thing God has done for us, what remarkable love has been shown in the person of Jesus Christ suffering on that cross. So Christians ought to love God. We ought to know more of the love of God. And we can only love God because God first loved us. But secondly, Christians ought to love others. And that's especially the emphasis of this passage in 1 John chapter 4. Here's verse 7 again. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. People who know God, who are Christians, people who know God, and knowing that God is so much love, will love others. And it's important for us to be loving others. It's part and parcel of what it is to be a Christian. Now, these are different times, but that doesn't let us off the hook for trying to love others. How can we be loving others at the moment? Well, praying for others is an immensely important thing that we need to be doing. Praying for others' health, uh, for, their, for their blessing during this difficult time. Uh, we think about those people who will be homeschooling, or those people who have been stuck at home for a long time and will be stuck at home for much longer. Those people who are suffering with other illnesses, those people who are going through loss. We ought to be praying for those people. That's an excellent way that we can be loving others. Getting in contact with other people is a great way to be loving them as well. There's a lot of lonely people at the moment. moment. Giving people a ring or getting on a, a Zoom call if you're able to do that. Or just sending someone an email or a text message. Just reminding them that you're thinking of them, asking them how they're doing. It's these simple ways in which we can show love. We can also love one another uh, by seeking to provide for one another where we can. If you're able to go out to the shops and you know of people who can't or are trying to avoid it more than others because they're especially vulnerable, then well, ask them if you can fetch something for them and drop it off at their doorstep. It's a simple way that we can be showing the love of God to other people. Remember, God's love for us was self-sacrificial and sending Jesus. So also our love for others ought to be self-sacrificial. Those are a few little ideas about how we might love others. And I invite you and encourage you to contemplate ways in which you can be loving others at the moment as well. So then, as Christians, we ought to love. We ought to love God, remembering that it's, oh, we can only love God because he first loved us. And secondly, we ought to love others. Uh, let's pray through those things, shall we? A gracious God and loving Heavenly Father, we do praise you and thank you for the supreme love that you've shown for us in Christ. It is so vast, it is so amazing. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you went willingly to that cross. We think about Romans 5, which tells us that people might be willing to die for a righteous person. And yet, Jesus, you died for us who are sinners, rebels against you, who by our natures hate you. Oh, 
for that is remarkable love that you have shown to us. And we want to praise you and thank you for that. We pray, Lord God, keep us close to you and, and always help us to be remembering the love of God for us that you've shown us in Jesus. Thank you for your love that you show to us in other ways. And we want to pray, Lord God, that you would provide for us our daily bread. Thank you that you give us uh, all the things that we need. And I pray, Lord God, as we experience those things and as we experience uh, the joys of life and the benefits of life in this modern world, we pray, Lord God, our attentions would be directed towards praising you for your love for us in those things. Lord God, help us also to be those who love others. Forgive us, Lord, for when we do not act as we ought to, rather than being channels of God's love to others, of your love to others, sometimes we just stop with ourselves and we hold your love for ourselves and we do not share it. Forgive us for that, Lord God, and we praise you that you can forgive us for that through Jesus and what he did for us on the cross. But we would pray you would give us wisdom as to how we can love others. We pray, draw to our attention those people who we can be praying for, those people who we can call, those people who need an encouraging text message or email. Lord God, we pray, help us to love one another, that we might show Christ to one another and his love for us. Lord, we pray for those who have known loss in recent days. And again, we pray for your upholding for them. We think especially of Don and of Alice. Lord God, we pray that they would know your peace. We pray for the funeral service for Alice's dad on Wednesday. And Lord God, pray that that might be a time in which they can rightly mourn. And Lord God, we pray that Alice and the family would know uh, your love very close to them. Father God, we pray for us, the, the people who are serving us at the moment. Again, we want to pray for the NHS. Thank you, Lord God, for those who are working so hard for us. We pray, Lord God, for your blessing upon them. We pray, keep them safe. We pray they will get all the equipment that they need. We pray you will give them all the wisdom that they need. We pray for our leaders. Lord, we pray that you'd help them to know what the right thing to do is at a particular time. Give them all wisdom and help them to be attentive uh, to making the right decisions, not making them rashly and quickly, but to deeply contemplate them and think carefully about them. We pray for the new opposition leader, Keir Starmer. We pray, Lord God, that at this time he would be able to uh, be someone who can encourage the nation and build up the nation as well. Uh, Lord, we pray that there wouldn't, this wouldn't be a time of division politically, but Lord God, that there would be unity as we all seek uh, to work together uh, to overcome this virus. Again, Lord, we pray for Boris Johnson and pray for his continuing recovery. We pray as well for the safety of his uh, girlfriend and of their, uh, their soon-to-be-born child. Lord, we pray, keep them safe. Uh, Father God, we pray for those uh, abroad in countries where uh, the crisis is worse than it is here. We think especially of the United States. Lord God, we pray, uh, give the leaders there all wisdom. We pray that they would get all the equipment that they need. Lord God, we pray you would uphold that nation. We pray that that nation's Christians might step forward and be known for Christ and be those who self-sacrificially show love. Lord, we pray for all of us in our interactions, though they are minimised in many ways. We pray, Lord God, that you'd help us to be salty salt and really bright lights in this world. Help us to be wise in our use of social media as we walk past people, uh, maybe as we go out for daily exercise or see people in the supermarkets. Help us not just to think of ourselves, but also of others and to show uh, the love of Christ. Lord God, as First John reminds us, no one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. We pray, Lord God, that your love for this world will be seen through us. Help us to be faithful witnesses in these days. So, Lord God, we lift these things up to you. And we know and praise you and thank you that you hear all of our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen.